Uh, well, before I start, I'd like to say uh, how great it is to be here in Krakow. Um, the, uh, but I'd like to ask a question, first of all. I'd like anybody in the audience who's wearing jeans to put their hands up. Okay, good. Makes me feel a bit more comfortable. <laughs> it's the only person I can see wearing jeans was myself. Um, I think it's, it's indisputable, isn't it, the Krakow on this wonderful Aspire slide, which looks huge when I look back at it, has had the most uh, amazing uh, development in shared services and BPO. Um, it's not really surprising. I've been coming uh, to Krakow for over 17 years now, and I know that because when I was at PwC uh, and we were setting up the Krakow Center, I had my first son, uh, Jacob, and he is now 17 years old. Um, and then uh, actually uh, in, Cap in Capgemini, um, just after, actually I, I was involved in selling the business from PwC to, to Capgemini, I had my second son and um, was involved uh, in, in, in uh, Krakow quite a lot and I think over the years I've made quite a few friends and quite a few of you are here today, which is great. Um, you may not have known me quite so well in that I ran the European business uh, that had acquired Intellinet and therefore the Serco business. Uh, so it's been, for me, quite a long history, and it's fantastic to be back here again. And after 17 years, my 17-year-old is taller than me, It's about to go to university, uh, and um, we really uh, had an amazing uh, sort of... Uh, well, raising him has been amazing, uh, but seeing Krakow grow like this has been amazing. But just to say that we've, we've now had a new baby, uh, and we're just very pleased to say we've just launched a new business which has its development centre here in Krakow, uh, which is all about robotics uh, and artificial intelligence. And I know you're thinking, when's he going to get on to talk about robotics and artificial intelligence? So I'll do that in just a moment. Um, first of all, let's just... This, this chart from an organisation called ABSL uh, has charted Poland's uh, success and growth. Really very impressive when you think that it's grown for the last six years 20% uh, per year in shared services and BPO, and obviously shared services and BPO are the lion part of that. Um, and it's forecast to continue to grow. I think, going a little bit back to John's challenge earlier, um, is automation, is robotics and artificial intelligence a threat or is it an opportunity? Um, with predictions of uh, huge amounts of work being automated, should we be questioning whether or not the future for shared services uh, is in doing what we are continuing to do today. And I think under the, under the theme of how far can we go, I want to just explore uh, those scales as to opportunity or threat uh, around this particular sector. Um, and when you think that very large companies like Wipro, for example, uh, in the offshore arena, is looking at losing 54,000 people from its organization and replacing them with automation technology, I think we have to assume that something is going to change in our business as a whole. Um, I'm actually a, an optimist, as you're here as we go through, um, but I think it's uh, really just posing the question, um, what could happen um, going forward is something that is not obvious at this stage, but it's something that we have control over, and because we know there's something happening, we have an opportunity. So let's talk about robots and AI. Uh, I'm going to start off by talking about some of the things that we're probably mostly familiar with. Um, we've all heard about automated uh, vehicles. And, uh, this is the, the Google one. We saw the one earlier, the one that's uh, the initiative in the UK. The Google car actually um, has now driven a million miles with no accidents caused by the car. It has had accidents caused by humans interacting with the car, uh, but the car itself hasn't had any problems. Uh, actually, that means that robotic cars, even today, are safer drivers than human drivers. Um, and actually, we talked earlier about Uber, and Uber is a, an amazing example. It's, it's been an incredibly successful business. It's the largest taxi company in the world, globally. It doesn't own one car. So, very interesting business model. But the interesting thing for me about Uber is they have declared that they will replace every one of their driven cars with a driverless car in the future. And why would they do that? Well, it comes down to money. Today, they share 25% of their revenue with the drivers. In future, they won't need to do that. And by 2011, there will be... Sorry, 2011. By 2021, there will be completely driverless cars that you can get in, tell it where to go, and it will take you there without you having to do anything whatsoever. 
This guy here, you can see, um, he kind of looks cute, but he's actually an industrial robot. But these are the new era of industrial robot. This guy can actually learn things. You can teach him what to do. Um, his operative shows him how to do new tasks, and he can do those new tasks over and over again. Maybe not very fast, but the fact is that every incremental uh, uh, minute that he spends working doesn't cost anything. Um, so an economic reason, once again, for using a robot, he may not be the fastest, he may not be the uh, most dexterous, but he can do the work, and he, every time he does it, it's free from that point on. And that is a very, very, I think, common theme around robotics and AI, which we all need to think about. He also doesn't take toilet breaks or uh, have holidays or things like that. Here we have Amazon's warehouses. Um, Amazon, in their warehouses, use these little robotic uh, uh, delivery guys. Uh, they pick up parcels from locations in their warehouses and deliver them so they can be sent to us. Um, they really are uh, using this in an industrial way. They have some warehouses um, of massive scale, but with very, very few staff in them. Um, so the common theme here, I think, across all of these is this is about replacing human labor, and that's why we call them robots. And um, it's uh, amazing. Uh, we all see these things as, as maybe positive developments, but then this is visiting our industry now. So this is now something that we have to think about from a shared services and a BPO perspective. The last one I want to show you here is, that is a robot performing surgery. Um, now, that what you think about robots performing surgery, now, actually, I have, to, I have to tell you, the technology is not quite there that they can do the surgeries on their own, but it very shortly will be. Um, now, that's an amazing development. It means that the shortage of uh, specialists that can do this kind of surgery um, you know, may be a problem that goes away. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a very highly complex task that we're being able to automate. And I think that... You know, we kind of think that automation and robots do simple things. They used to paint cars and, and, and screw bits onto, onto cars that are being constructed. Now they can do much, much more than that. If we go over to the other side over here, what we're showing is probably the, the, the other far extreme, if you like, which is all around artificial intelligence. You hardly pick up a newspaper today without reading something about artificial intelligence. And the question is, that, you know, half of those things are good things, some of them are bad things. Um, but here we have three examples. The top one, does anyone recognize the logo? Watson, yeah. The middle one? Okay, the middle one, so Watson is the IBM product. Um, it's an amazing program that they have, and this is becoming the focus of IBM's business going forward. Um, and IBM have, you know, they've decided to move out to a great extent of the back office world. They've already declared that 13,000 of their uh, Indian resources um, also, their offshore, far-shore resources will be reduced so they can focus on artificial intelligence. So this is the new IBM that we're seeing emerging here. Um, uh, Watson is able to study vast amounts of, of data and to make recommendations and conclusions from that. Um, and I think the most uh, uh, reported upon uh, version of, Dr. Watts, of Watson is Dr. Watson, and Dr. Watson is able to research every single type of a cancer surgery that's been done ever in the world and is able to make recommendations to surgeons as to what would be the most successful way to treat a particular patient. And he's doing that today. The middle one is Amelia. Amelia is a product from IPsoft. Um, Amelia is a virtual agent and um, you can talk to Amelia, you can have a, a video chat with Amelia uh, and um, you know, if you need to do certain tasks, certainly around service management, it's been used a lot in IT service management, um, then you can use Amelia. Amelia knows the answers to many of your questions, like, you know, I need to reset my password, or um, what do I do, my PC's not working. Um, she can actually guide you through and listen to your answers and responses, and can guide you through the majority of the IS service issues that you may have. And there are many other applications for Amelia. And then, who knows what the bottom one is? The bottom one is, uh, is DeepMind. And uh, DeepMind is the computer that has been uh, playing various uh, um, quiz shows. Um, and there's, be there's been in incredible um, uses of the sort of deep technology. Um, 
I think uh, recently there's been uh, poker games which have been played against the computer. Um, there's been quiz shows that have been played against the computer. Uh, but I did read one just this morning, actually, something called Deep Beat. And Deep Beat is able to, to write rap music uh, and rap lyrics. Um, I mean, why, why <laughs> maybe it's the millennial and the, the, uh, the X's that uh, chose that as the topic, but that's uh, very, very interesting how that's being used. Now, why are we talking about that in this context? Um, in the shared services environment, we're not really talking about these things yet. Um, what's really happening right now is two things. One called robotic process automation, I'm going to come on to. And the other is the AI technology is starting to be used, but it's being used more in the context of how do we um, get computers and, and artificial intelligence to read documents and understand what they're reading in unstructured data. All of you will know that we're great in, in shared services and BPO of managing structured data, but what do you do as soon as it's unstructured? So the AI technologies that we have today are fairly limited, but their, their main task is about understanding through the use of pattern recognition what a document actually means. I'm not going to go into that too much today, but I am going to ask this question. Is there anybody in the audience bold enough to give me a definition of this? No. <laughs> so what is robotic process automation? Uh, our definition is that this is the capability, software and services that allows you to transact in any IT application or website, typically in the same way that a human would. Um, in other words, as a human, we interact through the keyboard and through the screen. We take data from screens and we print things out and we analyze the data. We make complex tasks using that data and then we input data into another computer uh, or another system. So it's also a system which can perform complex rule-based work. And um, down here we have a little video and uh, what you can see on the left is robotic software actually working. It's not most interesting, it's not like watching a factory, but what it is doing is going through essentially a, a number of steps, actually very slow speed, it's been slowed down here, and it's filling out a form with data. Data from one database into another database. It's a very simple task, but it's just demonstrating that essentially we can take any process map, anything you can process map, anything you can, you can write the rules for and you can write them down, Sounds familiar, because that's exactly how we operate shared services and BPO. You can get this robot to do it. Um, now, when you, when you speed up these robots, see this system is logging into the screen. Um, it will be able to fill out over 28 seconds about 300 fields of data, which is several times faster than your fastest person in your organizations. Um, that's just one example. It's a very, very simplistic example of what robots can do. But actually, you're the first people probably in Poland to see a demonstration of it, so um, I think this is a great opportunity. So what's happened over time, I think, is this. First of all, we've seen this migration of work. Uh, I remember, actually, when I started in the outsourcing business about 20 years ago, we defined offshore, and offshore for PwC, or PW as it was at the time, I think, um, uh, was setting up a center in Rotterdam, um, and putting things, putting multiprocessors into the same center, and we ran a very successful center in Rotterdam. And then we got a bit bolder, we learned something, and we, we set up our Krakow center, um, and um, we realized that we could, we could hire lots of people quite cheap in Krakow, and, and you know, created the beginnings of the Krakow center. Then we realized that actually, the people in Krakow are really smart, and, and there's, there's this cheaper resource available in India, so we set things up in India. And that was what happened. There was a, there's been a migration of low-value work to the Far East, to the Philippines, to China, to India, and there's been a concentration of higher-value shared services work here in Poland and other areas around Central Europe. And I think that, that has been a very, very successful model. But my question to you is, what happens when a robot can do the work you sent to India and the Philippines and China at a fraction of the cost um, of employing a person in India or China. And I think it comes back to basic economics. The, out, the answer is inevitable. Over time, it's inevitable. That work will come back from India, China, and the Philippines. Why? Because it's cheaper to robotize the work and to automate the work than it is to do it in that way. And I think that's a, a challenge and it's an opportunity. And the question really is, you know, who's going to manage that work? Who's going to manage 
the, my, this thing keeps attacking me. Um, who's going to manage uh, that uh, migration of, of, of work? And, and, and this, is gonna, this, is gonna be a, this is gonna be an opportunity for you guys, in my opinion, and um, we're gonna talk about it. But let me give you one example. Um, in the, the last company I was working with, where I really started getting interested in the whole robotics piece, uh, one of our clients was a PC manufacturer, and very famous uh, global PC manufacturer. They uh, um, had a thousand people in very low cost centers across the world, including some of the cheapest locations in India. Um, and what they were doing was managing their order processing. There's a thousand, uh, a thousand Indians. Um, and they um, came to us with the problem is that, you know, we're, we're, we're struggling to manage it, costs are rising, they want to be paid more money because they, you know, there's maybe a shortage of certain types of labor. Um, they keep moving to other companies, we can't manage it, it's becoming untenable and costs are rising. What can you do? So we started using robotics, and actually using robotics, we took uh, over 500 of those thousand roles uh, out of existence. Um, so today, they have less than 500 people doing that work, uh, and they're continuing to develop that robotic program because they see that opportunity, um, you know, really uh, helping their business and helping grow their business. Now, what it's done is created a new set of skills and capabilities in their business, and I think that is really the question we should be talking about is how do we get ready for this change? And maybe rather dramatically, I've called it no sure. Um, but I think this is really a, a question of confidence um, and skills. What are the capabilities that are required to uh, manage a robotics? And I can tell you what they are. They're very, very similar to the skills and capabilities and techniques that you as shared service leaders uh, and BPO leaders are using today. It is really understanding what it takes to provide fantastic customer service. It's really understanding the fundamentals of process analysis, understanding how processes work, understanding how to connect those processes uh, with, um, uh, with the systems and, 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 and ensuring that you can get end-to-end -end processes that really make sense. Um, so in the world of NoShore, um, the people that are going to win will be those people that really understand automation, that have really done their homework on this and really uh, want to take that opportunity. Um, the reason to do that is that, frankly, I think it's going to be a long time before automation and robotics start programming themselves. Um, it may happen, um, and there is some contention about whether artificial intelligence is good or bad, because will it take over the world? Will it uh, decide that humans are irrelevant to existence? And, you know, then destroy all the humans or put us into matrix-like farms where we get uh, used in different ways. Uh, I think that's unlikely, and I think it's a long way off, certainly not in our lifetimes. Um, but I do think in our lifetimes that, that this shift is going to happen, and it's something that we all need to be thinking about. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And just a quick question to the audience. Does anyone know what this is? Can anyone recognize that program? Yeah, it's a spreadsheet, but it's actually the very first spreadsheet. This is VisiCalc. VisiCalc was invented in 1979. Before VisiCalc, thousands of people around the world worked on big sheets of paper called spreadsheets. Um, and VisiCalc was described as the magic piece of paper that could recalculate and calculate things. So this is an amazing transformation. Those thousand people, thousands of people around the world that worked on these large sheets of paper, every time somebody wanted to make a change, they'd have to get their eraser out and they'd be rubbing out things and recalculating and, you know, and spilling out these, spreads these spreadsheets, these paper spreadsheets. Now their job is completely gone. What happened as a result? Well, it, it actually bore a completely new industry. People started saying, oh, you mean we can do what-if analysis and it doesn't take two weeks to get the answer? And that's what I think, that's what we're emerging in here. So people, now people wanted to be analysts and the whole analyst industry grew up. People knew they could get answers to questions in seconds rather than minutes. And that very, you, know, you could get more and more complex models that would have taken thousands of sheets of paper. So that all disappeared and we bore a new industry which is all around analytics. I bet. Every single person in this room uses a spreadsheet in their job. It's the default way of talking about numbers. And what's to say that the default way of doing work in the future will not be to use automation and robotics? And what's to say that new industries, new ideas, new thoughts won't emerge? Um, that is all about that. And I think that's the really exciting thing for all of you. And, and I think um, you, this is coming really fast at us. 
Uh, and the reason it's going to come really fast at the BPO industry um, is because um, we uh, have a, a very, very large global industry. And I can assure you that even though we think we're, we're very large in Central Europe, the Indian machine is massive. I mean, massive. These companies in India are worth billions and billions of dollars. They've grown beyond all belief. They know that their market is about to be altered very, very rapidly. They're going to take action very, very quickly. And I think that's the challenge. We have to stand up as well here in Europe, and we have to do something about becoming the center of excellence around this work. Now, the reason that this picture's up there um, is because I think this is a story about confidence. This is a story about um, wanting to um, take that first step by not knowing how to do it. Naturally, my third son, who I haven't mentioned yet, uh, Nathan, um, he had some sort of physical uh, challenges as he was growing up, but he didn't learn to ride a bike until he was eight. And um, I put this up here because he's one of the, the, the most, uh, what would I say, um, one, of, one of the boldest people I know and one of the people that will take on absolutely early challenge. So we decided we were going to learn to ride the bike. And outside my house, there's this lane, and we used, I was running up and down that lane with him, holding his saddle, helping him along with the bike. And, you know, and eventually, there comes that moment where you let go. Okay, and that's a very, very important moment. And at that point in time, I was running along behind him just in case I needed to catch him or whatever. And I could hear him talking to himself, and he said, believe in yourself, Nathan, believe in yourself. <laughs> okay, and it was such a, for me, it's, 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 a, it's something that just, it, it just reminded me that that's what we have to do. We have to believe in our ability to do this. Uh, and I think that there's, that, that there's, only really, there's only one way to learn to ride a bike, and that is to get on a bike and ride it. You, there's no other way. And you can get help, uh, and um, there are people around who can, can help. There are, there's now a little company in, in uh, Krakow that can help as well. Um, so that's what it's really about. So what are we going to do about it? Um, first of all, you have all the skills in the Krakow market that you need to be absolutely successful at understanding robotic automation and making the most of it in your organization. You um, have to reevaluate some old normals. I mean, a few people, I've, I've mentioned you know, automation to everyone I've spoken to, as I normally do, uh, and people have said, oh, well, we're not ready for that. Oh, no, we're not ready for it. Uh, oh, no, 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 we need people, all our processes, all our... Um, um, uh, order to cash clerks, they all have to make decisions. Oh, so that's interesting. How do you train them? Oh, well, we have a process that we do. And you, you know, but I say, well, you can teach a robot to do that. Why don't, you get, why don't you start talking about the best way to collect more money or how to uh, improve your customer interaction and use those people to do that? Um, number two, rapidly develop the capabilities you need. And yeah, the real capabilities that you need in the organization is the ability to analyze organization. So the whole thing around business analysts, the business analyst is king in this world. Um, so think about that, but think about business analysts that know a little bit about technology as well. Um, that's where those uh, capabilities are. Uh, and the third one is just crack out, please. Just get started. Um, be the hub of the future of work um, excellence and uh, make this a great success. Um, let's grow that curve for Krakow and keep it growing and growing. Thank you very much. Thank you, David.